Okay, good morning. Today we're going to talk about um, how to set up your clients for an um, auto search or um, just set up an auto search on MLS. Um, I'm going to go through a couple of different ways of how to do it and then also um, explain why you should automatically send it to your client or why you should just send it to yourself before it goes to your client. So as you can see here, this is the dashboard for Canopy MLS. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is you're gonna go to search and then you're gonna go to residential and then detailed. So this is where you're gonna start putting in all of your information for how to set up a search. One thing that I do want you to know is it automatically defaults to having coming soon, active and under contract. I would suggest taking off the under contract part and just having coming soon and active on there. Uh, just because that's going to give you the best um, results and you don't want to have to sift through a bunch of them that are already under contract. Uh, if your client comes to you with one that says they're really interested in this, so it's under contract, but they're still really interested, you can then show that house and possibly do a backup contract. But for this instance, we want to just show them things that are either coming soon or active. So the first thing you're going to do is change this. And now the next thing that you're going to want to do is pay attention to down here where it says how many matches. And um, we want to narrow that down as much as possible, but also fitting as much criteria as possible. Um, so if it's going to be a single family, you're just going to select single family here. And then you can decide about this type if you want, like if they only want a two story or they only want a one story with a room above the garage. And uh, then you could do this. If they only want something with a basement, then you would do like one story basement. Um, and then you would just command or control to select multiple ones. Um, so for this instance, we'll just say they either want a one or a one and a half story with a basement. And then you're gonna go over here. So of course you can see here, um, you can, again, you can narrow it down as much as possible. Like if they only want, um, laundry on the second floor, then you would do this. Um, a lot of places with basements have laundry on in the basement. Uh, so if they don't want that, then you would narrow it down. And you can already see that narrowed it down to six without even changing any of this. And that's for the entire MLS. So things can really um, start narrowing down the more that you put in. But for now, I'm going to delete this and delete this, but you do have those options to narrow it down to that as well. Uh, now, what we want to be aware of is even though we're doing that, if things um, aren't showing up with any results, you'll want to back those results up a little bit. So things that um, maybe this would be the first thing that I would change would be what level something is on, unless they're very, very adamant about it. Um, I would still send them things that say, hey, I know this isn't on the upper level, it's on the main level instead, but it's not in the basement, is that still okay? Uh, so stuff like that. Next thing you're gonna wanna do is go right here. Um, and really this can go anyway. So either they want it within 10 miles from their work and they don't really care where it is as long as it's 10 miles within their work. So then here you could type in 10 miles of whatever their work address is. And then that's gonna show everything within 10 miles of their work. Or what you could do is if they want a specific subdivision, you would type in subdivision here. Um, if you're not sure which one it is or what it is, you can just start typing in something and it's gonna come up with all subdivisions in the MLS that start or end with that. Um, going up here, so again, if they only wanna be in Cornelius, well, then you would type in Cornelius, and then you would just select that. So right now, even with nothing else, there's only four houses in Cornelius with a basement. We're gonna um, disregard that for now, go back, and again, county, pretty much you're just gonna go as much as you can, and then you're gonna go over here to price. Actually, I'm gonna leave Cornelius in here, and then I'm gonna go to price, and I'm gonna say anything under 500,000. So the way that we do that is we do 500 minus, and that says that it's under 500,000. And you can see here, if I just hover over this, um, this section, it's gonna tell me how to 
and put that information. And just remember that it is already in thousands, so you don't need to type out the full thousands. So I know that 500,000 and under, I'm going to put that minus sign. Um, and then you'll see here that it already comes up with zero matches. So that tells me there's nothing in Cornelius with a basement under 500,000. So what I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to add Huntersville and Davidson onto this. And then I'm going to go 500,000. So I have two matches here. Um, you can, again, break this down as much as possible. Uh, and then if you want, if they want a specific number of bedrooms, so say they want at least three bedrooms, um, approximate acres, they want at least quarter of an acre. Okay, so that still gives me two matches. So I'm going to leave it like this for now. Again, you can go through and make it as, as detailed as possible. However, what we're looking for are those main criteria to be able to get us some matches. And then if we don't feel like it's enough matches, we can always go back and change some things that are on here, um, like this 0.25. So if something is listed as like 0.24 acres, well, that's almost quarter of an acre, but it's not going to show up on here because it's not exactly what we typed in. So for now, we kind of narrowed it down, and I'm just going to go to results, and this is going to show me what I have. So both of them are in Huntersville. What I typically do is I look at them, I see if they're even worth sending, kind of browse through, make sure everything looks okay, make sure the financing is what my, what my buyer is looking for. Maybe they want a specific school district, so I'm going to look at that. And I'm always going to read these remarks just to make sure. Um, and then go to the next one, do kind of the same thing here, kind of look at it. Now, one thing that I noticed right off their bat is this one is in Skybrook, so it is gonna have an HOA. And this one is in no subdivision, so it's not gonna have an HOA. So for me, if my person was looking specifically without an HOA, I would put it in my criteria. But for this instance, since I didn't include that, um, this one would be the best match. Now, obviously, you want to make sure that you're giving them more than one option. So what I would probably do here is leave it like this. Um, and then maybe I would just clear these out and show them everything that's also without a basement. So now that comes out with 40 matches. And now if they wanted, let's just say they just wanted Huntersville. So I'm going to take away Davidson and Cornelius. And now that's going to give me, let's see, still 38 matches. So that's a good amount. So this is where you could really narrow down things. But um, let's go back to the with basements. So I'm going to, I'm just going to highlight these with basements again. Um, so now I have three matches, I guess, including the two-story one with basement added another one. Yep. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go down here and I'm going to go and say I have everything that I need for my search. Cool. So I'm going to go to save. And then you'll have the option here, new save search, new auto email or new speed bar shortcut. What I would do is I would do new auto email or new save search. So if you're wanting to send it to your clients automatically, you're just going to go to new auto email and then you're going to select whoever the contact is. If it's not anybody that's already in your contact list, you're just going to go to create new contact. And then I always BCC myself on the emails if I'm sending them automatically. Uh, just because I want to see what they see. And then your subject here, this is just for the welcome email, but your subject here would be like homes meeting your criteria. And then you can change any of this right here. Um, your recurring email can change. Um, you, can, you can make it sound whatever it sounds like. And then here we'll say what the criteria is. Now you'll see down here, um, I have my signature line here. If you don't have anything, it's just the exact same thing I have in my email. So you can go to edit your signature, copy and paste it, and put it in there. 
Uh, so one thing that I do here is I go to enable as a favorite search on the home tab. And what that does is every time I log in, it automatically shows as a search, a saved search on my, um, on my home screen. And then you can choose if you want it sent as soon as possible. So if they're like, I want to know as soon as it comes on the market, what's going on with it. As soon as something price drops, I want to know. So this means anytime an agent goes in and makes something active or changes it to um, price increase or price decrease or coming soon or whatever, um, they're going to get that notification immediately. I typically just keep it at daily and then I do it in the mornings. And then it's going to send it to them about 630 in the morning, but I'll also get that email and I'll be able to look at it first thing as well. And then I can kind of sift through it and say, send them another email that says, hey, this one probably isn't going to be the best idea or this one seems really great or whatever. And then if you're okay with all that, you're just going to go ahead and click save. Now, one thing that I would recommend doing is um, setting it up to be sent to yourself um, first before sending it to the client. And the reason I say that is because if there's something that maybe um, the agent just did not put it in correctly, like I've been seeing a couple of houses um, where I, the criteria is five plus acres, but some agents are putting it in at 24 acres instead of 0.24 acres. Um, so it's obviously coming up on that search and I wouldn't want that to be sent out to my client and make it seem like I'm not doing my job, if that makes sense. So I have learned to set up auto emails to come to me instead of the client. And that way there, I'm able to look at them first and then I can send it to them directly to say, Hey, here's everything um, that's new for today. Uh, take a look at it. Let me know what you think, or I'll make certain notes about it. Like it has, um, going back to the basement thing, it has laundry on the first floor instead of the upper level, but still not in the basement, um, stuff like that. So that's how you set up an auto email. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that. But if you want to set it up as a new saved search, it's gonna be pretty much the same thing that you just did, except um, it's just automatically gonna go to your home tab, which means, so you would just put in the search name here, um, Huntersville homes with basement, but you could do it this way. Or what I typically do is I just put the client's name. So, uh, so I know exactly who I'm looking for. So it'd be like Sally buyer. Um, again, you could put their contact information in here. It's not going to contact them when something comes up, which is kind of a good thing, but it also just saves their contact information. And then again, you just want to enable favorites on the home search. So I'm just going to go ahead and save this for purposes of this video. So I'm going to go to save. And then when I go back to my home screen, you'll see here, Sally Buyer is showing up right here. And then, so I would click on that and then it automatically updates to whatever it is that day. So like for me, what I do is instead of having auto emails being sent to me every day, um, depending on what it is, I like for one client, I have it to where they automatically get sent to me for another client. I have it to where I log in and I just click on this and I kind of scroll through and see what else is new. Um, but that's how you're going to set up an auto email search in matrix and, or I'm sorry, in MLS. Um, and if you have any other questions about that, please do not hesitate to reach out to me and I'd be happy to assist you. Have a great day.